So in this video, I'm going to go into detail about friction loss in pulleys for four-wheel drive winching. So what happens when you take a pulley like this, you put a winch line around it, you start winching. There is some form of energy loss. How much is that? And what does it mean for you as recreational four-wheel drivers out in the bush? We're going to be testing a variety of pulleys building on my previous test where I did a two to one test against a bunch of rings and a bunch of pulleys. So I've got a couple of ARB 9000s. I've got a safe extract, only one of those, but I'll test it because um, that's new to me. I've got a couple of Factor 55s, um, a couple of Sabres, and I also have not one, but uh, two of the Yankum offset rings. Now I wasn't planning to test these initially but a reader wrote in and said hey um, I'm really interested to see your view on these new Yankum offset rings and I said um, okay um, I'll get around to them eventually I suppose but I'm not planning to get any and he said what if I bought you a couple and sent them to you and then you did the test and I said okay and I wasn't really expecting anything but they turned up at my parcel locker so thank you very much. I have the rings and I've done the test. Now I should stress that this test I'm talking about now is a generalized efficiency test. It is not specific to an evaluation of the Yankum offset rings. I'm going to get to that. It's all designed to give you guys an idea of how much efficiency you lose or friction you get going across one of these pulleys in a way which is meaning for you out in the field when you're doing four-wheel drive recovery. So in using pulleys for winching we're talking about rigging for mechanical advantage. But what actually is that? Well, well, it's when you want to apply more force than you can generate. So you need to multiply that force somehow and that means you need to trade something off. And that trade off is either going to be distance, time or speed. So for example, let's say that you want to undo a wheel nut and you've got a spanner or a shifter of a certain length and you're finding it hard. Well, you're going to get a longer one but and that's going to give you more force and more leverage but your hand is going to move a longer distance so therefore you are trading off in that case, distance and time, and in fact speed, to get that force multiplication. Now let's take a look at what that means in terms of winching. So we've got um, our theory and we've got the reality. Now we've got a car over here, we're going to run a line out around a pulley, back down again. That's your classic double line pull. So in theory that should halve the winch load. So if we need a thousand kilograms of force, it's not the right term, but let's run with it, 1000 kilograms of force to pull the car, 1000 kilograms on the anchor, 500 on the winch, 500 on the return line. That is the theory, it's a good way to think about it, it's the way I teach it conceptually but it's not actually true as we'll see it in a minute. That should also halve the speed of the pull and there's your mechanical advantage because what you're doing is that you're taking in two meters of rope but you're only moving one meter forward and that's your, your trade-off. Now this is the reality, you're going to get more than 500 kilograms of force on that uh, winch line because there is friction in that pulley. And we're gonna, that's exactly the point of this video. We're gonna look at how much um, of that friction loss actually exists in different types of pulleys. Now you also will reduce speed, but it won't be half the speed. And the reason is because of electrical motor load. The more load you put on an electrical motor, the slower it runs. I'm sure you've noticed that when your winch is nearly about to stall out, it almost comes down to a halt. You can hear it, hear it slowing down. So if you halve the um, load on it, it's actually gonna run a bit um, quicker because there's less load on it. So that's actually an advantage. But this one about taking double the line in, so two meters for every meter moved forward, that actually does hold from theory to reality. So here's the configurations um, that we tested. The two to one, which we've talked about, just run it out and straight back again. We also did a three to one where you run it out round a pulley, back down to another pulley, and then back to the same pulley. And that should give you a theoretical three to one advantage, but obviously not in reality. Um, and then you can do a four to one. Now I rigged that as something called a Spanish Burton. So that is when you do a double line pull, exactly the same as that, but on top of it, you take a winch extension rope, and you can see I put it in a different color here, and then you make a second uh, double line pull on top of that, and the combined gives you a theoretical four to one. Now I also had the Yankum rope on 
test and I want to thank um, Yank and Ropes for taking the time to talk to me about this video and I really explore um, their product. I'm going to be doing more on that in future but um, for the moment what I've done is I've rigged it as per their instructions for a 3 to 1, 4 to 1 and 5 to 1 and uh, they asked me to point out that um, when I do that you only actually need one rope not two but we're going to get into the pros and cons of that later on in another video. This is all about efficiency. So this is how the test was rigged using a two to one pull as an example. Got the car here, run the winch line out and then we attach that to uh, the data logging load cell. Then um, we take a winch extension rope from the other side of the load cell and put it around a pulley, in this case back down to the car because I'm using the two to one example here. Put another load cell between the pulley and the anchor point and then we can measure the winch tension force and the anchor point. And that's what it looks like when the car has moved in a bit. Okay, so here's an example. Let's say that we had 1500 kilos on the anchor point and 800 tension in the winch. Now for a two to one pull that should be 750 but let's just say that we measured at 800. Well, we divide 800 by 1500, we could call that 53%. Um, whereas the perfect would be 50%. There's many different ways to do this. I've seen people in the comments saying, do it this way, do it that way. Um, I've got the base numbers so you can do your own maths, but I've got a couple of ways I prefer. And we can go 1500 by 800. That's a 1.88 to one mechanical advantage when in theory, it should be a two to one. So you can see where the efficiency loss starts to come into play now. So here's how the load cells work. That's the cell itself and it's connected by two 12 tonne shackles to whatever load you want to put in it. I've only put one 12 tonne shackle in there at the moment. Now the load is measured and that is sent by Bluetooth to an app on a phone such as this. You can see it's reading 0 kilograms at the moment. Now if I was to pull that you can see that we're actually generating some force there only just a little bit. Now that's logging every second and what I can then do is um, actually generate it into a report. So here's a report I created earlier on. So we go here, here's some examples of some of the previous load testing done. So we just go into this one and you can see there that that's a timestamp of um, the exact time, zero, kilometer, uh, zero kilograms and you can see the load sort of building up there as well. Then what I do is I um, export that into Excel, then I can analyze the data, build graphs from it, create averages, do formula calculations etc. And that's how the load cell testing is done. So the load cells have been connected, they've logged all the data to a CSV file which I can import into Microsoft Excel and I can make a graph. So over here we've got the load in kilograms and over here we have got time and this is what it looks like. So this is is the load on the winch and that is the load on the anchor and in this particular case that was for two factor 55 rings in a Spanish building configuration. So what's going on here? Well this is where we're taking up stack and then I will always, whether I'm doing a test winch or a recreational winch or whatever else, um, for, for, for real, I will always put a bit of tension in the line and check everything is connected the way it should be, lines aren't touching, there's no dirt caught in anything, line isn't um, over a rock or a log or something like that. So that's what I'm doing here and that's why you see the, the car not moving just some tension then we apply the tension um, it takes a little while to settle down and you get a relatively nice um, even part here and then we release the tension at that point now um, because the vehicle is being dragged over gra gravel ground it's not going to be perfect and I don't mind that so I don't mind the fact there's some jaggies there but it is consistent enough for me to be able to do the same test again and again and again and I get exactly the same results whereas what I found is when I go on a real four-wheel drive hill it's it's too inconsistent and you can see the results um, in my other video about recovery loads. Anyway so I create this graph here and I go okay what is a nice consistent area and in this case um, it's pretty much that that um, purple area here and that represents 90 seconds of continuous winching so that gives me a decent average. So then all I do is I look at where um, that stops and starts in my CSV file and I take an average of this number, I take an average of that number and that gives me the two numbers of anchor force and winch and therefore the mechanical advantage and I did that for every single combination you'll see. Okay so tension's been taken up, we do a check Nothing's rubbing there, the ring can rotate freely. That's all looking nicely connected. We should have some tension, so about 40 and 80. 
so that's probably about right for what we've got at the moment that's all looking nicely connected at the other end here that's nicely through the hold as well so with a little bit of tension on it we can be happy that we can go ahead and actually put some decent load on it that's really pretty much just taking up the slack so let's put the load on and uh, off we go Okay, so we've got a little bit of tension in the line now, and this is where good winching practice is always just to check everything is set up so that rope is inside the groove the way it should be. That's looking good up there. Everything else is okay, nothing's caught in everything. And only thing in that rope is inside that groove. I think we're all good to go and commence the test. So here's the results then. So this is a two to one pull. So I've just put it up here to demonstrate that's what perfect looks like. A two to one mechanical advantage now and they're in order. We first rigged um, the Yankum, which was in its around configuration. So that goes around the ring and that came out to a 1.72 advantage. We then went through the ring and surprisingly it was actually fractionally better. Although I think those two are so close, it's probably gonna be within margins of error. We did run each test um, uh, twice. Um, then we rigged the Factor 55, that was a little bit better. Um, the Sabre was quite a bit better and I'm attributing that to the greater diameter and we'll, you'll see in the thermal test that um, the Sabre ran a bit cooler and I think that's because it's a bigger ring um, and there's less deformation of the rope. Now unsurprisingly the two blocks, the ARB and the Safe Extract, both did the best and that's consistent with my previous testing as well. Like I said, I've done enough of this to get repeatable results so it wasn't a surprise to me that there was a difference between the blocks and the rings over here. So that shows you what that looks like and then I've calculated the efficiency loss there and if you're interested in the formula um, I'll pop that in the description. Then we went to the three to one pools and that's what a perfect looks like, obviously exactly three to one. Yankum was 2.09 as was the factor 55 and take a note that these two are actually the same and the previous two were pretty close as well because the next one is a bit more interesting. Sabre did really well with their ring and ARB as well. I didn't do the safe extract because I've only got one safe extract block. I've got two ARB blocks and I've got two of all of these but only one um, uh, safe extract. So quite a difference there between uh, um, these two and those two and again I think that's a large diameter ring. And there's the efficiency calculations in case you're interested. All right, so now we come to the four to one and there's perfect again. Um, the Yankum was only 2.5 to one now I rigged it according to their methods but with the other three I rigged as a Spanish Burton so you can see with the factor 55 there's now a significant difference between Yankum and factor 55 there was not before and I attribute that because I've rigged, had to rig that one in a Spanish Burton um, you can't do the Yankum rig on any of these and I thought because they're so close let's just see if there's a difference and a difference has appeared now with the Sabre and the ARB they're very close again um, a, quite a difference between those two as you can see and there's the efficiency efficiency calculation but for something which should be a four to one pull that shows you that you can it's in the actuality it's not like four if you've got using the anchor it's more like two and a half and it's even below three for a factor 55 and these aren't you know 3.4 it's still a way off four. This is not a criticism, it, it's just physics. You just will lose energy to heat. That, that's all we're doing, just measuring how much energy is lost um, when those ropes go over the pulleys. All right, so what does this mean for you out in the field? You want a quick reference guide so you can understand and go, okay, I don't want to have to look through 10,000 pages of calculations and formulas and figure stuff out. Well, I've come up with something I've called a 60-50-40 rule, and it works like this. If you're on a two-to-one pull, then figure out what your recovery load is, and let's say it's 3,000 kilograms, and I've covered that in another video. You go for your gradient, your mire, everything. I so, said, okay, I estimate it's going to take three tons to move this car. Then multiply that by 60%, and then you can expect around about 1800 kilograms of load on your winch not 50 which is perfect 60 right so just go for 60 percent off that and that should be about right now i've skewed that a little bit low if you're using a high efficiency block it, it will probably be closer to maybe 55 percent but 60 percent is a nice round number to work with and it gives you a bit of a safety margin then if you're doing a three to one pull like this just halve it 
So if you calculate that your recovery load is going to be 3,000, then halve it and just say, I'm going to assume my winch will have to generate 1,500 pounds or kilograms, doesn't make any, any difference here. So that's that one. Then if you're doing a four to one pull, and I would recommend you only do that as a Spanish Burton because that's the more efficient, then go for 40% and say, okay, well, again, it's going to take three tons to move this car. 40% of that, I'm going to assume that my winch will generate 1,200 kilograms. Now, as ever, these are estimates. They do vary a bit but I do feel that having done all the testing and looked at various other people's tests um, outside of four-wheel driving I feel that this is a fairly reasonable um, rule of thumb to work out in the field. Okay so we've set up the Yankum rings for the next pull and you can see we've got the winch line coming out here and that winch line is connected to the load cell so we can measure the tension on the winch. It goes around this block and then it goes all the way back and it goes around that block and then it goes all the way back here. It goes through the center of this one and then back all the way anchored here. All right, now let's take a look at Yankum's offset efficiency. Now, the first thing I want to say is that I've had, um, at this point, two or three chats with um, Yankum Ropes, the CEO, um, Zoom calls, lots of emails, etc. And he's quick to say um, that they do not claim efficiency as an advantage. And if I can quote him correctly, say, if efficiency is the question, we've already lost. Well, I'm not here to evaluate the Yankum stuff specifically. I'm going to do that in another video. I'm looking at efficiency of which their product is one. So we need to look at it and they do have some specific rigging. So the offset ring was always the least efficient, sometimes equal with the factor 55, which previously I found to be one of the least efficient um, uh, rings. Um, and whether you go through or around, it didn't really t seem to make much difference, but let, let's show you how it works. So we did the three to one, four to one, and even the five to one. So we rigged it as per Yankum's instructions from their website. So that's with the three to one, it's out, round the um, pulley, back down to the next pulley, and then you've also got to go through that one and back the other one. Um, and we found that that actually gave us a 2.1 to one as opposed to a three to one. And again, you would always expect some friction loss. Um, that's not in question, it's just how much. So that was actually the same as um, factor 55. The others were around about the 2.5 um, to one, if you remember from the previous stuff. Then from the four to one, this is what it looks like. You go up and then you go down, you go back up, down, and then that's your four to one. Um, and we found that was actually a 2.5 to one rigged that way. And the others varied from um, 2.9 to 3.4. So we start to see an appreciable difference at this point. And then we also rigged the five to one. So we've set up for the next rig. Again, we're measuring tension from the winch. It goes all the way through here around that one and then this line comes through here it goes around that one and then it comes back through here through the middle of that one and then back through here and then through the middle of this one and then it goes back to the anchor point over here now what we've had to do is jam these blocks of wood in. There's about 100 kilos of load on there at the moment just to avoid it touching. So none of these ropes are touching each other. So that's important. And we'll see what sort of mechanical advantage we can get out of this setup. So again, what we've done is we've just rigged everything and we've got it to um, the point where it, uh, it can actually be tested. Um, make sure that all the rings are where they should be, nothing's touching, etc. There's enough tension on it for that, but there's not enough tension for it to be in any way dangerous. Once it starts to get load on it, we're going to move well out of the way. Um, up and then down, back up, down, through, and then we ended, um, ended up, you typically put it to a different anchor point. I actually had to put it to the same anchor point so that the um, uh, 
load cell could properly measure it, but made sure that the lines weren't touching nevertheless. And what we found there, we actually got an exactly three to one advantage, um, and that was rigged Yankum style. So what that shows is that the three to one advantage here is actually less than you can get off two blocks in a four to one Spanish Burton. So, it, and obviously the Spanish Burton requires two ropes, whereas this, nine, all of these don't. You can just use one long, long rope and obviously they're cow hitch union. I'll have something to say about that in another video. Um, but you do need a lot of rope um, uh, to do this. So that's the Yankum offset efficiency. Like I say, they're not claiming to be the most efficient, but this video, video is about measuring efficiency. So I thought I'd cover it. Now, from my previous video on this, here's a summary of general mechanical advantage for two to one. There's the perfect blocks generally worked, averaged out to about 1.83. And that's um, I now since then got the safe extract block that was about there as well. The bearing ring from red winches turned out to be about 1.78, so pretty close. Rings generally were a bit low, and this is, I think, seven or eight rings which I tested, kind of averaged it all out. And I even tested with a bow shackle, which shouldn't be used for this at all, but I actually got nearly a 1.5 to one advantage out of that. So if you got nothing else in Extremis, you could actually use a bow shackle as a pulley. So conclusions, first one. Recreational off-roaders really only need a two to one. I've been through this in my other video. I demonstrated the recovery loads in real life. I've measured them. I've looked at the military manuals, etc. Two to one is pretty much all you need. Now, on the rare occasions you need more than that, take enough rope, rig yourself a Spanish Burton. And, you know, if, you, if you're not out of it by multiplying your winch by 3.4, you're probably going to be in orbit or you need to do some serious recovery load um, reduction, or you need professional recovery or something like, like that. So, you know, that's really all you need. Now, if you are calculating out in the field, you do need to work in friction losses. I know, I mean, I've written books and I've said, um, look, it's a two to one, it's a three to one. And that's good for conceptual understanding. And I'll continue to teach that way. But when you're doing actual recoveries, you need to use something like my 40, 50, 60 rule for two pulleys or two to one, three to one, four to one Spanish Burton. And that will give you your actual likely winch load. Now, I also feel it's better to use blocks or at the very least large um, low friction rings once you get beyond a two to one because those frictional forces build up to the point where it starts to become a bit pointless. So pretty much anything will work for a two to one, but once you get into multi stuff, even Spanish Burton, I'd wanna be looking at the uh, lower friction options. And the Yankum three to five, um, They've got the advantages, um, and I'll, I'll cover that in another video, but they do lose a lot to friction. So don't look at those rigs and go, oh, it's a three to one, and multiply it by three, it's a five to one. You certainly won't get a five to one advantage out of their, their five, five part line there. So I hope you found this video useful. That's the efficiency. I do plan to do more on this, so use the comment section, tell me what, what you think, agree, disagree, clarifications, extra research, etc. And I hope you found it useful. Thank you for watching.